Hello guys, what's going on? A while ago I made a video about my expectations about the new Star Wars movie and I kind of broke down my thoughts and I said that I'm really looking forward to the first trailer coming late this year and now it's here and I thought I'll do a quick trailer breakdown video and I do a video in which I kind of share my thoughts on it, kind of highlight some things that I noticed and just share my thoughts unfiltered. So let's get right into it. Trailer came out I think yesterday or the day before yesterday. So I've watched it a few times by now. First scene, apparently on Tatooine, if we look at the type of landscape. And then we can see John Boyega coming up and it has been rumored before that there will be some kind of story around one particular stormtrooper and it looks very much like he will be that stormtrooper. You can see a little bit of his dress there, like the actual stormtrooper uniform. I think it looks actually pretty cool. Just in terms of the context, obviously we can only estimate or like guess at this point, but it looks very much as if maybe he lost his memory, he doesn't know where he is, he just woke up. Maybe it links to the little robot we see in the next, next scene where he's maybe looking for that robot? I don't know. But it seems very much like as if he's confused. Going into the next scene, we can see this little robot running around, or rolling around to be more exact, and to be very honest, this is something that upsets me a little bit because you can see that a designer thought about this for a long time and he was sitting down looking at old R2-D2, like R2 units and thinking like, oh no, we have to put this to the next level and then probably going to a million, through a million op uh, iterations and then coming up with this very CGI looking ball robot if you want to call it that and it very much is for me reminiscent of the feel of episode one there were just a few quirky robots that you saw running around and the problem i have with it is that it's quite far away and feels quite detached from the original star wars movies obviously the top is clearly an r2 unit but if you remember for instance when r2d2 and c3po were captured on tatooine and by the sand people and they are brought into this huge ship uh, that they have and they travel around to sell robots when they were in there with all these different robots all of them were quite analog and they had a very physical feel to them uh, if that makes sense this obviously feels to me like a cgi animation and it doesn't feel like something that we would have seen in the original movies it's just like oh no we have to do something different our two units have been done right so what can we do oh yeah, let's put him on a ball and he's rolling around and it's all quirky and stuff. I personally don't like it. Again, they are trying to tailor this movie to a new audience, bring it to the younger kids and they will definitely like it because they can't really, they won't put it into the context of the old movies as much as I do. But it's just my thought, you know, I feel it's a bit too happy CGI rolling around quirky thing. Not really my cup of tea. Here we can see uh, the new Stormtrooper designs and we've seen them before, like some images were released earlier or leaked, I'm not even sure, but I really love that. Like I love how they took the old design of the Stormtroopers, like of their outfits, and they turn it into something new. I love how they connect the eyes with the mouth and it just looks absolutely stunning. And I mean, these shots you see here very much speak the language of Star Wars and I think this is stuff that people really want to see. Right here you can see there's actually the rifle they're going to use. Obviously it's a very blurry shot, but it does give away the gun. There's not too much to say about it, uh, except that it has a scope on top. Um, I don't have a direct comparison to the old movie, so I don't know if this is close or quite detached from the original rifles that Stormtroopers used. But I thought it's just something you might miss, so I thought I'll flag it up. Opening this gate, you can see it a little bit there on the bottom, right? There seem to be some kind of vertical lines which might indicate some trees or something. And later on, we'll see another few scenes that have like forest planet feel to them. So whether there is a return to Endor, uh, which kind of was rumored previously already, or whether they're actually going back to Dagobah, could be either or, but also obviously could be a completely different planet. Back on Tatooine, we see uh, you know, her riding kind of more or less into the sunset on this motorcycle-y hovery board, which to me, obviously, in the context of Tatooine, very much reminds me of the hovering car that Luke 
used to have when he was driving around. Also, I think the color of it and the way kind of everything feels a bit grungy very much speaks the same language. But then again, this again feels to me nearly a little bit too much CGI. It seems to be like in the middle between Luke's hovering car, which was which felt very analog and and very like modelly, very built, very physical, and for instance the the pod racers that we've seen in Episode One, which were the exact opposite, and they felt very CGI and very kind of weird in a way. So it's kind of in the middle of the two, and I, with this one, as beautiful as it looks, I'm just not really sure whether I like it or I hate it. So yeah, let's let's see where they take that. Um, I like I really like this, like the whole look and feel of it. Obviously, it directly speaks to the original shots of the guys in the cockpit of the X-wings, um, also the cockpits of these gliders on the ice planet uh, that we've seen in episode the beginning of episode five. Yes, five. <laughs> I'm trying trying to get my episodes together here. I like how they evolved this from the original costumes they were wearing because if you compare this to the first scene of the robot, right, I felt that was a bit too far. They took it too far. That the little head of the robot kind of rolls around on a little ball that doesn't feel very connected to the original R2 design, but the costume that you see here, as well as the design of the X-Wings, very much speaks the language of the original movies. It's not the same, but you see the vest that he's wearing there and the helmet, how he it kind of squeezes in his cheeks and uh, the, the orangey visor that he's wearing. All that is very reminiscent of the original movie. It's not the same, but it's a lovely elevation of what we've seen in the past. So I really like that. And then they are just really, you know, hitting home with this one in the background. Again, you can see it seems to be some kind of forest planet. Again, maybe Dagobah, maybe Endor, who knows. They're flying very low above the water, which might indicate that they have to infiltrate a base and in order to be not detected from the radar or whatever they have, they just really fly low above the water. I don't know. It's just something that kind of would make sense. I love the design of the X-Wings. Again, it's slightly changed from the original, but it is still close enough to work with the original movies you know it seems to come from one big idea so i really like that and then they're introducing the dark side right they're introducing the siths and you can see this guy seems to have some kind of problems walking again a foresty environment and or dark bar like i said it could be either or he then takes out his likes lightsaber and we've all seen this this has been parodied a million times already on the internet one thing that's interesting to mention is that his lightsaber seems to be pulsating more than in the old movies or like even in episode one, two and three. So whether that indicates that it's maybe more powerful or that it's, I don't know, I don't know what it indicates, but it seems to be a bit different from the lightsabers we've seen before. And then obviously just above his hand, there are two miniature lightsabers coming out. And honestly, guys, I don't know what to think about this. It just seems to me like so unnecessary. I think this scene would have worked just perfectly fine without the two little lightsabers, but kind of like with a robot, it feels like they're like, oh no, no, normal lightsabers have been done. We have to do something different. So let's see if we can add little tiny lightsabers to it and hopefully that makes it more interesting. I don't think it's necessary. I think it looks a bit stupid. It's a bit pointless. It very much reminded me of like when Darth Maul was introduced and uh, he then had his lightsaber with two blades coming out of you know either end of the lightsaber. Everyone was like, oh, that's cool, that's cool. In the end, it was still a shitty movie. I think in order to make a good Star Wars movie, you don't need to reinvent these little details. Just make sure the story is right, make sure the settings are right, make sure it all makes sense. I'm not sure what to think of this. It, you know, kind of like the little rolling robot. It could have just been an R2 unit. I would have been happy, and I think it's a bit unnecessary, and they're just trying a little bit too hard with this and then in the end they're going all out 
and they're bringing it back home. We can see beautiful detail here on the Millennium Falcon and he's flying this insane maneuver. On the left you can see like TIE fighters coming in and shooting at him. As much as I love the Millennium Falcon, I, again, landscape-wise, I think they're probably on Tatooine. Linking back to, to the beginning, the first scene with uh, John Boyega, I think it's probably the same planet, the same kind of larger scene or something. Again, this feels to me as much as they like hit the nail on the head with the design of the Millennium Falcon, and obviously it's all perfect, but it's just unnecessarily crazy animated, right? He's flying this insane maneuver up and down and the camera following him. And, and if you see the beginning of the scene, it looks very much like found footage. The camera is a bit shaky. It looks like someone's actually filming it. It's just, it just feels unnecessary, you know? You don't need that much action. Like, keep it grounded, keep it really simple. I would have preferred that. But I can imagine that with a lot of Star Wars fans, this really hits home and that's what they want to see. I personally would have preferred a slightly more simple approach and overall to the whole trailer a slightly more analog approach, if that makes sense. I would have hoped that maybe they... I don't know, just keep it a bit simpler. They show a few more models. If you remember, there were these scenes where J.J. Abrams was standing on set and he was talking to the fans and I think you could win like a little role in the movie or something. But in the background, you saw little robots running around and people in costumes, you know, people that were actually wearing animatronic costumes. And, and that's something I miss in this trailer. Like, where is all that? I want to see analog physically built robots running around. I would have loved to see a shot of the Millennium Falcon where I'm actually not sure. Is that a model or is it CGI? And with this, it's impossible to shoot it with a model. So it's obviously CGI and it, it just feels, again, very, very digital. And, and, and seeing this trailer, I feel it might go a little bit too much into the quirkiness and into the colorful effect overdose that was episode one. Obviously, uh, without Jar Jar Binks, fingers crossed. But, yeah, that, that's kind of where I feel it might be going. And while I understand, like I said before, they want to tailor it to a new, to a younger audience and they have to make it visually appealing, that's all understandable and cool. But for me as a hardcore fan of the old movies, I would have hoped that they kind of live up to what they promised in these on-set films with J.J. Abrams with lots of analog pieces and stuff. Missing that a little bit in the trailer. And then they're just cutting into the big title. And uh, yeah, I think, guys, overall, I think um, it's not a bad trailer. But as you can probably see from my reaction, I'm a little bit disappointed by quite a few things in the trailer. It would be great to hear your feedback. What are your thoughts in the trailer? I'm sure you've seen it by now several times. What do you think? Is it exactly what you expected? Or is it maybe, are you really disappointed? Or also like, what, what do you expect of the movie? Is it more like the analog 1980s, 1990s look and feel? Uh, or is it more, this very contemporary, highly animated, very CGI-driven, uh, you know, 3D future cinema feel that this trailer has. Let me know in the comment section below, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little video, this little trailer breakdown. If you did, you can leave me a like. You can subscribe to my channel. That would be appreciated. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Take care, and I'm out. Bye.